Last year, I put out a video ranking every single roller coaster that had ever been built by Rocky Mountain Construction. This innovative ride manufacturer has taken the amusement industry by storm due to their ability to transform unpopular rough wooden coasters into smooth, thrilling hybrid coasters using wood and steel. Due to their success, they went on to build these rides from the ground up and produced a few other coaster models. These include the Topper Track Coaster, which is their wooden coaster design, and the Raptor Track Coaster, which is a single rail design. Altogether, they've constructed 25 different roller coasters, and when I ranked them last year, I had only been on 20 of them. Now the only one I've yet to ride is Hakuge at Nagashima Spa Land in Japan. With it being the only RMC in Asia, Hakuge is no doubt going to be a tricky one to get on. But at the end of the video, I'll reveal approximately where I think it would place judging by its reputation and layout. Otherwise, I have first-hand experience with all 24 other RMCs located around the world, and I found ranking them this year to be especially difficult. And that's not just because I've ridden new ones and have reflected on past experiences, but because so many of these rides kind of blend together as they feature such similar elements and are therefore extremely close in quality. But they're also all among the greatest roller coasters ever built, so as I get towards the top, it pains me that I can't place like five different coasters at the number one spot. Understand that if a ride seems low on my list, it's probably not. RMC is just that good. Or perhaps you have entirely different opinions from mine, which is completely okay too. As a matter of fact, I'd encourage you to leave a comment letting me know how you rank the RMCs you've been on. Alright, let's dive in. And kicking off the list is also the original coaster by Rocky Mountain Construction, and that's number 24, New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. While this is far from a bad ride, it definitely feels like it was a prototype in my opinion. Not in the sense that it's rough or uncomfortable, actually it's far from it, but because it's the tamest RMC I've been on. That famous airtime they're known for, you only get a few instances of on New Texas Giant, with the best examples being the first drop and the speed hill before the mid-course break run. I've also never been very impressed by the second half, and I think the lack of variety in the first half with those three overbank curves is uninspired. Still, it's pretty fun for what it is, and really allowed RMZ to make a name for themselves. Number 23, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is the first of five Raptor coasters we'll be talking about, and even the weakest one is a dang good ride. That said, it does have its flaws, ranging from the restraints, which are tight and uncomfortable, and the shaky track work. Layout and force-wise, I think Jersey Devil is fantastic, with great airtime and three very different inversions. I can also appreciate that it's on the longer side compared to other RMC single rail coasters. Number 22, Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is a near clone to Jersey Devil Coaster, with the only real difference between the two rides being that Wonder Woman has a few additional bank curves to wrap things up. Some people will say that this one runs faster or is smoother, but personally I've never noticed a big difference in how these coasters ride. They're equally enjoyable, but Wonder Woman takes the edge because I do think those two elements at the end make for a bit of a stronger finale. Number 21, Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia. You know RMC is good when this rings towards the bottom, and I feel the need to mention that because every single one of these rides from here on out is in my top 100 favorite coasters out of 791 I've ridden in my life. My biggest complaint with Twisted Cyclone by far is its length. It's the shortest of the RMC hybrid coasters by duration, and you can feel that. I also don't love how inversion heavy it is at the start, because most RMC Zero G rolls don't do a whole lot for me. Where Twisted Cyclone shines is absolutely in its airtime, and it's really the first coaster on this list to have those tiny little bunny hills that deliver proper bursts of extreme ejector airtime. Number 20, Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. This is the first of a few unpopular opinions you'll see on this list, as many rank Storm Chaser as high as a top 10 RMC. Now keep in mind, the only time I've ever visited this park was on a relatively cold, rainy day on the last day of the season, and though the ride didn't appear to be running slow, I've been told that it's the most likely reason I'm not as high on Storm Chaser as some others are. I still loved the airtime, and I think the inversions are quite decent, but it is on the shorter side and lacked the insane power I had heard this ride delivered. Number 19, Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. A lot of coaster enthusiasts who have ridden many RMCs will rank Joker towards the very bottom. Me personally, I think it's far from the weakest. It's got the typical ejector airtime you know and love, and a greater variety of inversions than many of the others. And this doesn't affect the ride experience, but I really dig the color scheme, how you have one rail purple and one rail green. It's one of the coolest looking coasters I've ever seen. Number 18, Medusa Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico. Before I rode this coaster, Medusa seemed to have a particularly good reputation amongst coaster enthusiasts. Only problem is none of these people had ever been on it. Now I can see how the layout could make this out to be one of the better RMCs, but as it turns out, there's a lot less emphasis on airtime compared to speed and turns. While I appreciate that the company did something different and it is a great ride for what it is, Medusa's far from one of the better RMCs. I find that I prefer their more extreme, airtime-focused coasters. Number 17, Stunt Pilot at Silverwood. 
Of the Raptor coasters, Stunt Pilot is by far the smoothest and most comfortable one, but it's also not as crazy as a few others I've placed higher. I think RMC realized that scaling back the intensity of their Raptors was the best thing moving forward, as it allows it to cater to a wider audience. Stunt Pilot still has some very powerful moments of airtime and whippy moments, but it's also going to be approachable for most members of the family in my opinion. Number 16, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. The first ever Raptor is exactly what I was referring to just now. It's so damn intense, which is a quality I love, but because the forces place more stress on the track, it also hasn't aged very well. Combine that with the uncomfortable restraints, and Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster definitely is far from a perfect ride. But I'll tell you what, there's probably not a better paced roller coaster in the world than this thing. Well, except we're Railways are at California's Great America at the number 15 spot. This is an exact mirror image. The only slight difference between Railblazer and Wonder Woman is I feel like Railblazer is a tad bit smoother, but they otherwise provide identical experiences. Same off the charts intensity, same world class pacing, but also the same restraint setup. I really wish there was a way to experience a Raptor with the intensity of Wonder Woman and Railblazer with the more comfortable track work and trains that Stunt Pilot has to offer. Number 14, Goliath at Six Flags Great America. Of all the coasters on this list, Goliath has definitely been one of the more surprising ones. After years of hearing it was one of the weaker RMCs, I got off disagreeing entirely. It's no secret that it's a short ride, but I love how every one of these elements complement each other. It's got a few great moments of airtime, two superb inversions, and some fun bang turns with laterals. Plus, it's the first RMC on my list built from topper track, and that wooden coaster feel is something I'm a big fan of. Number 13, Lightning Rod at Dollywood. This is an RMC that's fallen down my list over the years, and now that they're getting ready to remove the launch, I think 13 is a pretty accurate placement for it. I've only ridden Lightning Rod in 2021 after they replaced the wood track with steel track, and I vividly remember the disappointment when I first got off. Of course, I was grateful to have ridden it at all with it being so unreliable, but man, it was so underwhelming riding a coaster that I had heard was one of the best of all time, but didn't come anywhere close for me. There's still some qualities about it that I find extraordinary though. For example, it's layout and terrain usage, but I also think the quad down, even after it had been slowed down over the years, is quite something. I just can't help but feel that the rest of the ride felt relatively slow and lacked the forces I had hoped for. Number 12, Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. On the contrary to Lightning Rod, its sister coaster at Silver Dollar City really delivered in the intensity I expected. It's got similarly great terrain usage and excellent moments of airtime combined with that raw wooden coaster track. The main downside for me is all three inversions on this ride are focused around hang time, and that's a force I've never been a particularly big fan of. But that really comes down to your own personal preference, and I completely understand why some would place this ride higher in their RMC rankings. Number 11, Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I think you can make a dang good argument that this is the most unique coaster RMC's ever built. They designed it so that the trains would race each other, and the way the elements play into that is incredible. Unfortunately, these days, it's rare that it consistently duels, but understand this is not RMC's fault, it's entirely due to the park having slow operations. The good news is the layout still stands on its own with amazing airtime and inversions, but man, when this thing duels twice in the same ride experience, it's well worthy of a top 10 spot. Number 10, Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. I think this might be one of my more controversial takes, but I love Wicked Cyclone so much. So many of the rides I've placed lower are unfortunately on the shorter side, but this one is far from short. It takes three full laps around the structure, all while providing exceptional airtime and so much variety in its airtime too. I also love how in the second half you have all these steel supports in the way and don't know what's coming next, as that's an element of surprise you don't see incorporated into too many of these RMCs. Number 9, Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. It's amazing how much better RMC did on their second go because there's a night and day difference between New Texas Giant and Iron Rattler. This ride has probably the two best drops on any RMC and one of the best inversions as well. It interacts with the quarry wall exceedingly well even though the layout itself isn't very long. It's one of those coasters that focus on quality over quantity and that's why I decided to give it a top 10 spot on my list. Number 8, Wildfire at Colmorden. At last, we finally make it to Europe for the first of three RMCs located on the continent. Wildfire, despite being the weakest of the bunch, is an amazing ride with so much to love. For starters, it's a very imposing coaster the way it's perched atop a hill and towers above the rest of this zoo. So it looks incredible. Does it ride incredible? To keep it short, first half yes, second half sort of. Every element from the first drop to the zero G roll is absolutely some of the best RMC has to offer, but I do think some people overlook how weak the second half can be as a result. The pacing is a bit all over the place on this ride, especially if it's running slow, but Wildfire is still an excellent coaster and easily the best in Scandinavia. Number 7, Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. 
Of all the small-scale RMC coasters, I think Twisted Timbers is hands down the most powerful. The ride contains so much ejector airtime, it's actually ridiculous. But as someone who loves that kind of thing, this ride is right up my alley. So airtime, 10 out of 10, both in terms of quality and quantity. Where this ride suffers just slightly is I don't really care for any of the inversions. Don't get me wrong, they're not bad, but when I compare Twisted Timbers with some of the RMCs I rank higher, this is the one thing holding it back a little bit. Still, I think they did a phenomenal job on this renovation, and it rounds out what might be the best one-two punch of any park in the world. Number 6, Untamed at Wallaby Holland. Originally, I had to really think about whether I preferred this or Twisted Timbers, but I think what it really comes down to is Untamed has such a great variety of inversions, so much so that it was able to take the cake for my favorite small-scale RMZ. Additionally, it has so much variety in its airtime from sustained hills to quick bunny hops. I've also got to shout out the second half and how you weave in and around the structure a little bit. Seriously, more RMCs need to do that. Now before we get to the top 5, if you've enjoyed the video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Coaster Dash so you don't miss any content like this in the future. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, check out my new merchandise store, where I'm selling Coaster Dash t-shirts, hoodies, and so much more. Thank you so much for the support, and let's discuss my top 5 RMCs, all of which make up some of my top 15 favorite coasters I've ever been on. Number 5, Wildcat's Revenge at Hershey Park. Aside from one other ride we'll talk about, Wildcat's Revenge was possibly the most shocking experience I've had on an RMC. I knew it would be good, don't get me wrong, but I didn't expect it to be in the top 5. And it's funny because the layout isn't all that cohesive. It kind of feels like it's going all over the place, and the elements of choice are somewhat random. But some way, somehow, this combination led to outstanding variety with some unconventional elements like the two wave turns, the lateral double down, and that crazy whippy zero G roll with weird profiling towards the end. Wildcat's Revenge left me no doubt that RMC's new designer Joe Draves is going to put forth some of the best of what the company has to offer moving forward. Number 4, Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens, Tampa. What many people might consider to be the greatest RMC, Iron Gwazi is no doubt an incredible ride and was perhaps better than I expected after some rerides. There's a dang good argument to be made that Iron Gwazi is the most intense RMC of them all. It's so fast paced it can be hard to catch your breath in between elements. It contains many outstanding airtime moments and the best inversion RMC's ever done with the death roll. But it still wasn't quite enough to shake up the top 3, mainly because the second half feels a bit random, but not as much in a good way like Wildcat's Revenge. There's probably 3 instances of elongated turns that pull absolutely no forces and I feel like it's the only real downside with this coaster. Otherwise, it's a phenomenal ride and worth the trip to Florida alone for. Number 3, Zadra at Energylandia. This was the first time RMC built a hybrid coaster from the ground up, and they went absolutely crazy. The number one strong suit of this ride is its pacing is out of this world. The speed at which you take each of the elements is phenomenal. It's also got so much variety with an almost equal focus on airtime, inversions, and even laterals. You heard that right, this is probably the best RMC ever when it comes to laterals. I think this ride is very close in quality to Iron Gwazi, and they are comparable in many ways, but I found Zadra to feel a bit more pronounced in its elements, and that's why I give it the slight edge on my list. Number 2, Airy Force 1 at Funspot Atlanta. If you would have told me that one of the best RMCs would end up at Funspot Atlanta, I'm not sure I would have believed you. But Airy Force 1 is basically as perfect as it gets, and since it's at such a small park, it's easy to marathon over and over again. I just recently had the opportunity to get back on this coaster and experienced it under very different weather conditions than my first rides. And even when it's frigidly cold and not running the fastest, it's still probably a top 5 RMC. But when it's warm out and going lightning fast, I think you could make an argument that it's number one. Everything from the elements to the way they're positioned to the pacing is phenomenal. It's got the best collection of inversions on any RMC and the most ridiculous sequence of airtime with the quad down. I cannot believe this ride exists, but I'm so grateful it does. Only reason it didn't place at number one is because there's one RMC that's considerably longer than any of the others, and that's Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. This might not have been a very surprising choice for number one, but that's for a good reason. When Steel Vengeance opened to the public in 2018, it quickly gained a reputation as one of, if not the greatest roller coaster ever built. And still, five years later, I think there's a good case to be made that it is. Now, it seems like I'm in the minority there now, as many people who used to rank this at number one now have it a lot lower. Whether or not this is actually how people think, I don't know. I think for many enthusiasts, hitting on Steel Vengeance became the cool thing to do. But on this channel, you're going to get honest, unfiltered opinions, and I genuinely think this remains a perfect ride after all these years. With 5,700 feet of length, Steel Vengeance feels like it never ends, and I think the variety between each half of the layout is outstanding. 
The large elements at the beginning are tremendous and stand on their own, but when you begin to fly through the structure for almost the entirety of the second half, that's really where Steel Vengeance excels. The bombardment of ejector airtime and inversions you can't really see coming are awesome, and then the ride ends things out with six little bunny hills in a row. In many ways, it feels like RMC designed this coaster for enthusiasts while still giving the general public the ride of their lives. It's for all those reasons and more that Steel Vengeance is my number one RMC in the world. But I did promise I'd predict where Hakuge would rank at Nagashima Spa Land, so let's get that out of the way. This is an absolutely massive ride with a pretty terrific variety between its two halves. Its pacing appears flawless, and I think it's right up my alley as far as RMCs go. I'm going to come out and say that I think Hakuge would place at number 5, just ahead of Wildcat's Revenge and behind Iron Gwazi. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it placed a few spots higher, or even a few spots lower. If you've been on Hakuge, I'd love to hear in the comments where you rank it amongst the RMCs. And just in general, if you've ridden any, because I think RMCs are so much fun to talk about. I appreciate you all sticking with me today, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.